The question is probably written on the thumbnail. Which one of these are crocodiles? The answer could vary. Some would say all of them. Some would probably say two of them. And some might even say none of them. But how and why? Well, let me brought up the question. What exactly is crocodile? Okay, before we actually talk about the topic, are you familiar with the term proprietary eponym? It's commonly known as generic trademark. See this? What do you call these things? Tupperware? That's a brand. The thing is simply called food container. This one? Styrofoam? That's a brand. It's called polystyrene foam. This one? Taser? That's a brand. It's called electric shock device, etc. While not exactly an equal comparison, such thing is also prevalent in zoological nomenclature. That's because the name of the family is taken from the genus name. Sometimes even higher rank like order is also taken from the genus name. Even so, I've seen a great occurrence of such phenomenon in the usage of the term crocodile. The term crocodile is used in multiple levels of groups, even in those that are technically not crocodile, if I do say so myself. First, let's talk about the easy topics, the extant group. All of the currently extant crocodiles are classified in the Ordo Crocodilia. Oh, by the way, some authors write the taxon name with an I, some write with a Y, and I believe no one is asking for crocodile scientists to just decide the correct way to write it. So for now, let's just assume both are valid. While I've heard a lot of people call the members of this order as simply crocodiles, an effort to make it more precise had been made. That is, to call it crocodilian. Talking about the extant members in the order level is quite easy. I've never known a person that misidentify an extant crocodilian as other animals. The currently extant crocodilians are divided into three families. Alligatoridae, which are the alligators, Gaffialidae, which are the gharials, and Crocodilidae, which are the crocodiles. Identifying each family is actually quite simple, but I've noticed that a lot of people are still unable to do so. The obvious one is the snout. Members of Alligatoridae family have U-shaped snout. Members of Gaffialidae family have I-shaped snout. Members of Crocodilidae family have V-shaped snout. If we compare it side by side like this, it's quite obvious. But it might not be if you're just looking at a single specimen. So let's move on to the second key, the teeth. Members of Alligatoridae have a complete overbite. When their mouth is closed, the lower teeth are on the inner side of their upper teeth. Members of Gavialidae family have interlocking teeth. Their teeth are also relatively uniform. Members of Crocodilidae family also have a somewhat interlocking teeth, but their teeth sizes vary. The most apparent trait is their fourth teeth. Their lower fourth teeth fit into a notch on each side of their upper jaw. Those two characteristics are enough to identify them on the family level. But there are two others that are harder to notice. Members of the Alligatoridae family have more separated nasal discs. Meanwhile, members of Gaffialidae and Crocodilidae family have a fused nasal discs. The other difference is the integumentary sensory organ, or ISO, which are these dark pigmented skin elevations. Members of Alligatoridae only have ISOs around their snout. Members of Gaffialidae and Crocodilidae have ISOs all around their body. Now intuitively, the actual, truest crocodile should also be in the Crocodilidae family. That's the Crocodilus genus. So, this family contains three extant genera, Crocodilus, Osteolimus, and Machistops. Technically, all of these have the crocodile common names, but the truest crocodile is the bearer of the name itself. Identifying each species is actually quite easy. The problem is characterizing them in the genus level. What differentiate Crocodilus from Osteolimus and Machistops? That's difficult. But it had been characterized and published. 
It uses 164 characteristics in the analysis. That's complicated. But such is the life of taxonomies. Since the work had been done, let me just tell you what exactly are the characteristics of the genus Crocodilus. We can simplify that with four traits. A wasp-waisted iliac blade, multiple blind recesses along the medial surface of the caviconchal recess, a fork anterior ectopterygoid process, and the extent to which the serangular obscures the angular in lateral view. That's taken literally from the publication, by the way. Now, you might think, that's not really practical, isn't it? You can't look at those characters in living specimens. And yeah, that is indeed correct. You cannot. But such research is particularly important for fossil analysis. Again, such is the life of taxonomies. That's a slight peek into the more complicated side of the question. And that's just the extant specimen. Next, let's talk about the extinct animals. But before that, Okay, so, some of you might have heard of Archosauria. That's the clade that encompasses dinosaurs, birds, and crocodiles. Some of you had probably known that Archosauria can be divided into two clades. Ave Metatarsalia, that's the dinosaurs, including birds, and Pseudosuchia, that's the, quote-unquote, crocodiles. So, let's see how deep is this clade exactly. Let's just try to reach the Crocodilia clade, you know, the order that we are familiar with. Within Pseudosuchia, there is Suchia. Within it, there is Paracrocodilomorpha. And then Loricata. And then Crocodilomorpha. Then Crocodiliformes. Within Crocodiliformes, there can be Mesoeucrocodilia first, or straight to Metasuchia. Then Neosuchia. Then Yusuchia. Then finally, within the Yusuchia, there is Crocodilia. Now, do keep in mind, I'm just listing the crown group that contains Crocodilia. Each of these clades have stem groups. Imagine how complex the evolutionary relationship is. Now, let me ask you, what do you think are the characteristics of Crocodilia order? What enable you to identify crocodilian as crocodilian? You can keep the answer to yourself, but think of it. How much of that are actually traits that are exclusive to the crocodilia clade? If you think of the gait, elongated and massive skull, that have been going on since the pseudosuchia clade. The fusion of frontal bones and the formation of secondary palate that enables them to eat underwater had been going on since the Crocodiliformes clade. Even the trait that differentiate Crocodilidae family with the other two that I talked about before, the tooth notch between maxilla and premaxilla, that had been going on from the Neosuchia clade. It's a plesiomorphy. Internal nares surrounded by pterygoid. That exists from the Yusuchia clade. So yeah, when we're taking extinct animals into account, it becomes very complicated. The fact that most of these are learned from fragmentary fossils makes it more difficult to analyze as a whole. Still, the question is, where do we draw the line exactly? Because you'll see articles that call them crocodiles. Super crocs, galloping, dinosaur-eating crocodiles, etc. It's kind of funny to me since it's basically like saying, yo, look at my favorite ancient chicken, and you're looking at Pachycephalosaurus. Like, huh? Chicken? So, which one of these should not be called crocodile? That varies from person to person, of course. I limit the crocodile terms for the members of the Crocodilidae family. But still, I personally just use their scientific names to avoid ambiguity. For you, well, you do you. As long as you specify what you mean, it's kind of fine. Now, let's see some examples of famous fossils that people call crocodile and see where they are in the phylogenetic tree. Anatosuchus, which is known as the dark crocodile, is one of the interesting looking crocodiles. The name literally means dark crocodile, by the way. 
This one is a notosuchia, which is a stem group inside the metasuchia clay. Now this one. I've seen some articles and YouTube video that label this image as caprosuchus, but that is wrong. This is araripe sucus. It's named after the araripe basin in Brazil. Just like the anatosuchus, this one is also notosuchia. Caprosuchus is this one. Its name means boar crocodile. This one is also metasuchia, so it's still closely related to the previous two. Next is simosuchus, the pug nosed crocodile, which doesn't really look like a crocodile. Even so, this one is still a notosuchia. If you are quite older, then you might be familiar with the name Metriorhynchus. The name means moderate snout. This one is featured in Sea Monster, and yes, this is a marine crocodile with a sign of fluke like tail. Metriorhynchus is a member of the Talatosuchia, which is a stem group in the Crocodiliformes clade. Then the very famous Sarcosuchus, which means flesh crocodile, commonly known as the Super Croc. It is a member of the Folidosauridae, which is not depicted here, but it is in Neosuchia. So again, technically not a crocodile. Even though Sarcosuchus is known as the Super Croc, there are actually bigger ones. This is Deinosuchus, which also live in the Cretaceous period. Now this one is actually a basal member of Alligatoroidea superfamily. The Alligatoroidea family is included in this superfamily, by the way. So Deinosuchus is technically more crocodile than the previously mentioned crocodiliforms. The last one is not that famous, but it's my favorite crocodilian, so I'll put it here. It's Moura Sucus. Even though it looks weird and somewhat funny, this is actually a caiman, an actual member of the Caimanine subfamily, which is a member of the Alligatoridae family. So this too is technically more crocodile than the previously mentioned crocodiliforms. Those are some of the famous non-crocodile crocodiles. That being said, this classification is not robust. Yeah. It'll be rearranged over and over again as we get more evidence and do more research. Someday, our definition of crocodile might be completely different than what we have now. The more evidence we get and the more we look at them, it will probably be more complicated, but that is the path towards the truth. And that's also why taxonomy is important. And intuitively, taxonomies are important. I mean, who else would actually work on these stuffs? That's why it'll be nice if we can spare some funds for animal systematics works too. It's not all about ecology, you know. Guys, I swear, I'm not wasting my life studying an obsolete field. Animal systematics is a relevant field. Trust me, it's fun, guys. Come join us. Guys. Guys? Oh, by the way, for those of you who are an aspiring zoologist, especially those who are interested in animal systematics, then, um, good luck. Yeah, good luck. Anyway, enjoy your day.